Hello friends, it's Logan Albright here and I'm back again with another book review and this one took me a while to finish because it's a long book. It's The Life and Times of Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. This is one of Charles Dickens' earlier works and I think it really shows um, in that the writing style is not quite as mature as in some of his later works. I say that as if I'm an expert on Dickens. I've really only read, apart from A Christmas Carol, which everybody's read, uh, David Copperfield, which I read and reviewed on this channel earlier. And I really liked David Copperfield. I thought it was great. And Nicholas Nickleby is very good too, but I don't like it quite as much. And I'm going to go into why. Now, I have quite a lot of little like nitpicky details to talk about of this book, and it's going to sound really negative at times. And I don't mean it to be, because I actually really enjoyed it. The book is a lot of fun. Dickens is great at... Um, uh, writing really evocative, beautiful prose that really jumps out on the page. He's uh, he's wordy at times, but his, he uses his words well, and I think that he's a great writer. And he's also great at, at dialogue. He's great at uh, coming up with really interesting characters. He's great at character names. The character names are ridiculous in here. There's uh, names like Wackford Squeers and Vincent Crummles and Smike. His hilarious like North English names that are one of the trademarks of Dickens that I love. He's also very witty. There's a lot of comedy in here. I wouldn't describe the book overall as a comedy. I think that would be stretching it a little bit, but there's definitely a lot of comedy involved and it's a very funny book in parts. I laughed out loud a couple of times. So don't take the following criticisms too seriously. I'm just comparing it to David Copperfield and to some of his other works and uh, to other writers that I like in general and showing how uh, as an early work of his that's not fully developed, it could be better in places. Before we do that, let's talk about the edition that I have. This is the None Such Dickens edition of Nicholas Nickleby. Uh, it is a facsimile version of an older uh, edition that's very famous, that's been reproduced by the Overlook Press. It's a beautiful hardcover in olive green with a little leather stamp on the front here and illustrations throughout the inside. Uh, Overlook Press is a publisher that I have an immense respect for. I've talked about them on this channel before. They do all those beautiful little hardbacks for um, the P.G. Woodhouse books. They did the copy of Gormenghast that I've talked about on this channel before. They don't put out a lot of different books, but the ones they put out are really beautiful. And this one is a, it's a brick. It's really heavy to carry around, and it's a little bit awkward to read at times, but it's beautiful, and I love it. And I always gonna, I'm always going to try to get none such Dickens when I buy Dickens books in the future because I just think they're great. Dickens wrote this book when he was in his late 20s, and I think it's an astonishing achievement to write a 835 page novel of this kind of complexity at that age. I know that I certainly wouldn't be able to do that sort of thing when I was that age. I can't do that sort of thing now, even though I try. Uh, so I'm really impressed by that. But there are certain weaknesses when compared to his later works. Uh, one of which is the obvious serialization of the book. These books, like many of Dickens' books, were written as a serial that was published in magazines at regular intervals. And the consequences of that are kind of threefold. One is that uh, he was under a pressure to write to meet deadlines. And so that kind of kept him, you know, having to come up with something every week or every month. I'm not sure how often they came out, but he always had to come up with something to put out. And so you sometimes have a have padding, like word padding that goes in um, that doesn't really add a lot to the plot, but just is there to fill out the word count. Also, since he's being paid by the word, uh, the padding is there to help him get the paycheck. And so the book is probably longer than it needs to have been. There's a lot of stretching there and things like that. The other problem I have with the serialization is that the it causes the plot to feel very episodic, which I didn't really feel in David Copperfield. You know, Nicholas Nickleby goes out and does a thing, and then that's over, and then he does another thing, and then that's over, and then he does another thing. It's a little bit like the Odyssey or something like that, where there's sort of unconnected uh, adventures that happen. And, and they all do kind of connect at the end a little bit, but it feels kind of artificial. Um, it doesn't feel as organic as it did in, for example, David Copperfield. I think Victor Hugo is my favorite novelist, and he is uh, a master at this. He'll he'll introduce threads early on in the story, and then you'll forget about them, and then they'll come back and play a pivotal role in the plot later on, and you're like, oh, I forgot about that. that didn't, I didn't realize that was going to happen. And that's I think he's so good at that, and he's so brilliant, um, and it's so organic, whereas uh, Dickens is a little bit more, just feels like a, a series of unrelated adventures that are then kind of artificially tied up at the end. Uh, not quite as skillfully handled as it could have been. The basic plot of Nicholas Nickleby is like a lot of these kind of books. It's a young man, his father dies, he has to go out into the world to seek his fortune, uh, and he encounters all kinds of nasty characters along the way. Uh, he's got a villainous uncle who tries to thwart him and his sister at every turn. He encounters an evil schoolmaster who beats children, and there's all kinds of crazy characters throughout. Um, and so that's kind of a standard plot. It's nothing too exciting about that, but it works and, and you're interested to follow Nicholas and see what happens. Uh, it's more about, you know, the sort of characters he meets and, and uh, his, his coming of age than it is about 
uh, the individual adventures, I think. There's a romance element that's thrown in in like the last third of the book that I never really entirely bought. I felt like it was kind of shoehorned in. The character didn't really seem to have any reason to care for this girl. It's sort of a love at first sight sort of thing. He just sees her and he's like, I want to marry her. And that's, that's all that's said about it. There's no really opportunity for them to develop a, a believable, realistic relationship. So that felt a little bit thrown in to me. I think that could have been handled better. Regarding the characters, I mentioned that Dickens is really great at creating these characters. I think that there's so many great memorable characters in these books, especially, you know, these side characters who are just really quirky and interesting and they're really well written and they're well rounded and I love these characters. Um, in, you had, uh, in David Copperfield you had Betsy Trotwood and Mr. Dick and in this one you have um, you know Mr. Squeers and you have uh, this character named Arthur Gride. They're just they're great well written characters. They're really nice and a lot of them are villains and a lot of them are just quirky sidekicks. Um, but what I've noticed and I've noticed this in a lot of books, not just Dickens, so it's, I'm not picking on Dickens here, is that the main characters are a little bit flat. They're a little bit uninteresting. Uh, in David Copperfield, I mentioned that David Copperfield is extremely passive. Um, he just lets the plot happen to him and doesn't really take any action to affect it. Uh, Nicholas Nickleby is a little bit of the opposite of that. He is sort of uh, perpetually outraged and uh, that's sort of his character is like Dickens is, is doing a lot of social commentary on the social ills of the Victorian period in England. And Nicholas Nickleby goes around seeing injustice and is like, ah, I won't stand for that. I'm going to stop it. And he's very hot headed and he's always trying to start a fight and, and right wrongs, which is, you know, a different problem than, than David Copperfield has. I think it's, it's a good character trait for him. But again, he's a little, it's a little bit one note Johnny. It's a little bit flat. He's just not that interesting of as a character compared to the other characters in the book. And I was trying to think about why that is. And I think that there is an inherent problem, and I've noticed this in my own writing, where it's hard when you're making a character shoulder the burden of the plot to also give them good characterization. And it can be done, but it's more difficult. I don't know, I'm not really sure why it's so difficult, but it seems like if you need the character to drive the plot forward, it's hard to then make them well-rounded and interesting and um, diverse in their characterization. You see this all over fiction, all over the place, like, uh, the side characters are more interesting than the main characters. Han Solo is more interesting than Luke Skywalker. Uh, Samwise Gamgee is more interesting than Frodo Baggins. And it just seems to be a, a continual theme, and I think there's a few reasons for it. I think one of the reasons is that when you cause the main character to be uh, shoulder the burden of advancing the plot, it makes it much more difficult for them to have interesting characterizations, a well-rounded character, maybe uh, exaggerating certain traits of their personality. They have to be balanced, they have to be relatable to the, to the reader, and I think that makes it harder for them to go off on kind of crazy, more interesting side character traits. You can't, for example, give them traits like the main character is comically greedy or extremely lazy or all these things that make a great side character because if you have a comically greedy or extremely lazy main character, they're not going to take the steps you need them to take to advance the plot. They're going to lay around all day or they're going to be, you know, unlikable or unsympathetic because, you know, you need to be sympathetic to your main character. So instead, we end up giving them traits like, oh, he's really brave or he's really self-sacrificing or he's really heroic or, you know, he's really empathetic. And the, I think these are just less interesting, harder to harder to define in fiction traits. You know, they just kind of come across as a little bit generic. Uh, you might have your hero be a little bit naive, so he'll be relatable and that's okay, but he can't be too naive because he's got to be able to outsmart the, the villain and uh, come to a successful conclusion of the story. Side characters have a lot more latitude to then have kind of more, a little bit more exaggerated cartoonish traits that make them more interesting. Uh, whereas the hero, he's got to got to be a good guy. He's got to be a good guy, and he's got to be a little bit boring because if he has too many eccentricities or weird character ticks or things, they get in the way of his his need to move the plot forward. And like I said, this isn't universal. I think skilled writers can really do uh, great things with the main character, but it does seem to be harder. And I was I thought that was interesting because I hadn't really thought about this before, and I noticed, it was something I noticed when reading the two Dickens novels that I've really delved into, David Copperfield and Nicholas Nickleby. So yes, as a whole, I thoroughly enjoyed Nicholas Nickleby. Uh, it was a little bit long. It was 835 pages in my edition, so it took a little while to get through. But I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. There's a couple of uh, signs of immaturity in there, which I mentioned, but it's still a lot of a good time, and I'm, I'm glad I read it. Uh, I'll be returning to Dickens in the future. If you guys have recommendations of other books I should read, please let me know. I've heard great things about Bleak House. I'm interested in that one because it's very highly critically acclaimed and seems to be the favorite book of his among critics. Uh, I kind of, as a kid, read... Uh, 
the old curiosity shop and uh, the Tale of Two Cities, and I didn't like either of them, but maybe I was too young at the time. I've obviously read A Christmas Carol. Everybody's read that. Um, but if you have other novels you want to recommend and say I should go to next for Dickens, I'd love to hear that. Please leave them in the comments. Apart from that, I've been Logan Albright, and I'll be back again with another book review soon for your viewing pleasure. So if you like this video, I hope you'll uh, click the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep making videos if you keep watching them. See you next time.